Greetings, agents. The Foundation conceals indescribable horrors, cosmic terrors, and strange aberrations. However, the greatest fear is the one you can understand immediately and whose intentions you have absolute certainty about. We will examine one of the Foundation's best kept secrets, an agent of death and destruction that simply refuses to stop. Item number SCP-682 Object Class Keter Special Containment Procedures SCP-682 must be destroyed as soon as possible. At this time, no means available to SCP teams are capable of destroying SCP-682, only to cause massive physical damage. SCP-682 must be contained within a 5 meter by 5 meter by 5 meter chamber, with 25 centimeters enforced acid resistant steel plate lining all inside surfaces. The containment chamber should be filled with hydrochlorhydric acid until SCP-682 is submerged and incapacitated. Any attempts of SCP-682 to move, speak, or breach containment should be reacted quickly and with full force, as called for by the circumstances. Personnel are forbidden to speak to SCP-682 for fear of provoking a rage state. All unauthorized personnel attempting to communicate to SCP-682 will be restrained and removed by force. Due to its frequent attempts at containment breach, difficulty of containment and incapacitation, and high threat of foundation exposure, SCP-682 is to be contained inside. The foundation will use the best of its resources to maintain all land within 50 kilometers clear of human development. Description SCP-682 is a large, vaguely reptile-like creature of unknown origin. It appears to be extremely intelligent, and was observed to engage in complex communication with SCP-079 during their limited time of exposure. SCP-682 appears to have a hatred of all life, which has been expressed in several interviews during containment. See Addendum 682-B. SCP-682 has always been observed to have extremely high strength, speed, and reflexes though exact levels vary within its form. SCP-682's physical body grows and changes very quickly, growing or decreasing in size as it consumes or sheds material. SCP-682 gains energy from anything it ingests, organic or inorganic. Digestion seems to be aided by a set of filtering gills inside of SCP-682's nostrils, which are able to remove usable matter from any liquid solution enabling it to constantly regenerate from the acid it is contained in. SCP-682's regenerative capabilities and resilience are staggering, and SCP-682 has been seen moving and speaking with its body 87% destroyed or rotten. In case of containment breach, SCP-682 is to be tracked and recaptured by all available mobile task forces and no teams with fewer than seven members are cleared to engage it. To date, attempted breaches have numbered at 17, while successful breaches have numbered at 6. See Addendum 682-D. Addendum 682-B, portion of recorded transcript of Begin log. Skip 0 hours, 21 minutes, 52 seconds. Uh, now why did you kill those farmers? If you don't talk now, we'll remove you from this attempt and place you back into... Pardon? Uh, speak up. Move the mic up closer. The microphone only has so much gain. Move it closer to it. Don't mess up, man. Look at it. He ain't... Disgusting. End 
Addendum 682-D, Breaches with SCP-682. The Addendum contains six recorded instances of containment breach. It lists the designations and names of the Foundation personnel who fell in battle. Most of them are Class D personnel, but the list also includes mobile operatives, Foundation researchers, and military and civilian personnel. Addendum 682-E Termination Options Log of Events 682-E18 Doctor Attempts to use SCP-409 on SCP-682 General General And Doctor Observing 400 hours Exposure SCP-682 began to tear at the point of contact, causing mostly trauma to the area. SCP-682 requests several times to know what it has been exposed to. 800 hours. Crystallization begins, spreading much slower than normal. 1200 hours. SCP-682 shows signs of extreme pain and begins having seizures. 1300 hours. Crystallization stops at 62% conversion. Crystallized area explodes, causing massive physical trauma to SCP-682. 1400 hours. SCP-682 recovers from exposure, despite the loss of limbs and organs. SCP-682 begins regeneration, stating that it will attempt to kill and consume all staff involved in event 682-E18. SCP-682 appears to be immune to SCP-409. Use of other SCP items to terminate SCP-682 must now first be tested on samples of SCP-682 before full-scale testing. In accordance, the doctor's recommendations. See document 27B-6. Doctor and doctor have request permission to attempt the termination of SCP-682 using SCP-689. The request is currently pending approval from the... It has also been suggested by Dr. Gears to use SCP-182 in an attempt to communicate with SCP-682. SCP-182 has expressed reluctance and refuses to enter the containment center of SCP-682, if at all possible. And low. Despite having collaborated with the Foundation on some cases in which they themselves recognized the need to destroy anomalies, until now, we had no record of the existence of SCP-682. Examining confidential records of the anomaly, it's clear that its ability to adapt goes far beyond what is shown in this document. Unfortunately, the GOC does not have the necessary resources to guarantee the safe elimination of a creature of this kind. We are willing to collaborate with Foundation personnel once again, aiming to find a way to eradicate 682, but knowing their way of working and the secrecy with which they keep their experiments and results, it would not surprise me if they refuse our help, claiming confidentiality and lack of trust. Taking into account the number of anomalies with universal and reality-altering capabilities that the Foundation has under its power, I can only think of two possible scenarios. The anomaly also has tomaturgic properties that make it truly indestructible, in which case, keeping it contained as it is with the Foundation's resources is an acceptable solution, at least for the time being. Or, the most likely option given the Foundation's history, they have something to gain by keeping the creature alive and hidden. Until we find a way to stop the threat without making it even worse, the only thing we can do is continuing to expose the Foundation, hoping they will take responsibility for the inhumane experiments by exposing their sinister agenda. Help us maintain normalcy by suggesting future entries to uncover and leaving your opinions in the comment section below. I am Virostris Anonimo. We at the GOC and you have been informed.